What does the UK want in Ukraine? That's something we need to ask more about, especially after their latest funding. We will tell you all about it, but before that, if you're a fan of non-corporate funded free news and analysis, you've landed on the right YouTube channel. We publish three videos a day, first at 9.15 a.m. EST, second at 1.30 p.m. EST, and the third at 5.30 p.m. EST. So if that's of interest to you, tell us why the UK is turning into a joke with every passing year. Okay, let's begin. The United Kingdom's approach to the Ukrainian situation oscillates between extremes of affection and aversion, presenting a fascinating paradox. While France emerges as Ukraine's most fervent advocate and Germany its most substantial financial ally, it is the British troops and leaders who find themselves directly on Ukrainian soil, offering guidance that straddles the line between wisdom and folly. This interventionist stance can trace its roots back to Boris Johnson, whose diplomatic maneuvers once led President Zelensky away from the negotiating table. Since that pivotal moment, the UK has embraced a role that might either shepherd Ukraine to victory or hasten its defeat, depending on one's interpretation of events. Presently, the UK dispenses another contentious piece of advice to Ukraine, potentially provoking President Putin's unrestrained wrath. This strategy, whether seen as audacious or imprudent, underscores the UK's weird position in the geopolitical chessboard surrounding Ukraine. In a twist that reads more like a scene from a British comedy movie than the somber pages of international conflict, British military maestros have pitched a novel approach to Ukraine's defense playbook. According to a report by the Sunday Times, during a recent visit by British Defense Secretary Grant Shapps and Army Chief Antony Ratkin, Ukraine was counseled to adopt a defensive stance in the east while unleashing targeted fury on Crimea and Russia's Black Sea Fleet. This advice, seemingly torn from the annals of classic warfare yet infused with modern precision, suggests that Ukrainian forces should not overextend but instead retreat to stronger positions when needed. The strategy aims to concentrate their might against the Black Sea and Crimea, leveraging Western long-range missiles that have already made their mark over the last half year. Adding a layer of intrigue, a leaked conversation among German military officers broadcasted by Russian media reveals Britain's more tangible support with soldiers on the ground in Ukraine. These British forces are not just offering sage advice but are actively aiding in the use of storm shadow missiles. With a reach of 155 miles, these missiles bring the whole of Crimea within striking distance, laying bare the UK's bold, if not brazen, commitment to Ukraine's cause. Crimea's airspace and territorial integrity have long been inscribed by Russian President Vladimir Putin as the proverbial red line, a boundary not to be crossed without triggering severe repercussions. Yet in a bold defiance that might be mistaken, for a script out of a high-stakes drama, Ukraine's Western allies, notably the UK, have not only tiptoed but gallivanted across this line. With the aid of storm shadow missiles, Ukraine has orchestrated a series of audacious strikes on Crimea, seemingly undeterred by the spectre of escalation. The plot thickens as British expertise extends beyond advisory roles directly contributing to Ukraine's naval victories in the Black Sea. Reports attribute to Antony Radikin, the UK's naval strategist extraordinaire, the orchestration of tactics and decimating Russian ships, thereby asserting control over the Black Sea. This narrative unfolds against a backdrop of increasing Ukrainian forays into Crimea and even the Russian mainland, a strategic pivot reflecting a grim acknowledgement of the challenges on the conventional battlefield. Since the fall of Avdivka, a strategic gem in Donetsk to Russian forces, Ukraine has been portrayed as grappling with daunting shortages in manpower, an armament even as it makes these bold incursions. This shift towards high-impact symbolic targets in Crimea and beyond is a testament to Ukraine's stupidity and the unyielding support of its Western allies painting a picture of extreme stupidity in the face of adversity and altering the contours of conventional warfare. Do you know UK is now flexing its non-existent muscles? It's embarrassing but it's funny as hell. Here is a video especially for you. 